You're worthy of all the praise, Lord, all the glory we can give, Lord. You're worthy, Lord, and we just want to thank you, Lord. For we know that, that you are God, Lord, and we, we got to just keep looking to you, Lord. For it's you, Lord, that, that, that holds our future in your hands, Lord. You are the Alpha and you are the Maker, Lord, the beginning and the end. And, Lord, we just want to thank you. We don't know what's all in between, but Lord, we know who got all of that. Yes, Lord. We know, Lord, you have us. We just want to thank you, Lord. We just want to praise you. We just want to give you all the glory. And we just want to ask your presence, Lord, in this service, Lord, that you would just bless, Lord, yes. if you go even out of over the airways, Lord. We just pray that you would just let your spirit, Lord, abide. Abide in this place. Lord, we just want to thank you.
and you sung that song. I already had my testimony ready. I was here last Sunday. Thanks to the Lord, I made it back today. Yeah. I thought I was leaving here last Sunday, y'all. Wow. And nothing but the Lord. Yeah. I told my sister-in-law on Sunday night, I said, it was cloudy when I got up last Sunday. And I said, I'm going to get back in the bed. It's going to rain. And so I listened to this word that my mind had. I knew it was. I said, no, nah, you need to go to church. Because I was at home by myself. So I was here. I had somebody help me. I couldn't do nothing but call back. And I was, I just thanked the Lord for obeying the word when it comes to me. And I thanked the Lord for doing everything. He done did enough. He done did enough for the baby again this Sunday.
angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adores him. And it is still the sweetest name I know. Amen. Amen. How many of you are just glad to be in God's house on this morning? Amen. You're sitting there looking at me wondering if I can preach. And I'm standing here wondering if you can say amen. Because amen to a preacher will make him preach from the pulpit. Amen. Amen. My preaching professor taught me. He says that a good sermon ought to be like a decent woman's dress. He says it ought to be short enough to be interesting but long enough to cover the subject. And we pray that our sermon meets those qualifications today. Amen. I'm so honored to, at the invitation to come share here with you on this Sunday morning. Amen. 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 Uh, journey with me if you came carrying your personal copy of the Kingdom's Constitution pivot of our preachment will be emanating from the gospel according to St. Mark chapter 8 and we will commence reading at verse number 1 Matthew chapter 8 verse 1 reading from the English standard version it reads to this wise and when he came down from the mountain great crowds followed him and behold a leopard came to him Knelt before him, saying, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. And Jesus stretched out his hand, touched him, saying, I will be clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded for proof to them. Just for a few moments, if you can stand to look at your neighbor, look them square in the eye. If you cock at you the best you can. And tell them these words, neighbor, neighbor. oh neighbor, oh, neighbor. Jesus, is Jesus is willing. willing. Amen, you may be seated in the house of the Lord. Jesus is willing. But ladies and gentlemen, I just gave you the shout of the sermon and the title of this sermon and nobody broke out and gave God praise. Maybe you just don't know what Jesus is willing to do. Jesus is willing to help you in whatever situation that you're in. Jesus is willing to pick you up and turn you around, place your feet on solid ground. Jesus is willing to use this pandemic for his glory and keep us in it. Jesus is willing to help a church that has broke off from a connection go into deeper water and charter territory that has never been chartered. Jesus is willing to change our community and bring us back together. Jesus is willing to pick up marriage and decrease divorce. Jesus is willing to stop mass shootings. Jesus is willing to do just what we need him to do. And the question this leper poses in this passage is a question that all of us are asked when we are dealing with the problems, pains, and perils of this life. And when it seems all hope is gone, we find ourselves asking the question, Lord, are you willing? Maybe there's somebody here today that this question is going through your mind as you're grappling with all the things that life has thrown at you and the world seems chaotic and you looking for answers and can't find any solutions and you're asking yourself, Lord, are you willing? The good news of the gospel is Jesus Christ is willing to do just what you need him to do. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm so glad that Jesus does not lead us to find our own solutions, but Jesus meets us in the time of desperation, and he says to us, Child of God, I am willing. This text, ladies and gentlemen, 
is tailored to teach the truth that Jesus honors earnest faith. Can I say that slow so I can say it some more? Jesus honors earnest faith. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to be extravagant in your faith. You don't have to be flamboyant in your faith. But if you come to God with a true heart, he will honor you in the time of your need. Do I have anybody here who's ever called on the Lord in their time of need? Is there anybody in here who thought all hope was gone and Jesus honored you because you came to him with a true heart of faith? There are two movements in this passage and then I'll bid you farewell. The first thing I want you to see in this text, ladies and gentlemen, is that Jesus will hear your desperate cry. Jesus will hear your desperate cry. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus has just concluded his teaching series known as the Sermon on the Mount. And the teachings of Jesus was so persuasive that the text says that folks heard the teaching of Jesus and they discovered that it was something different about his teaching because he taught with such authority and he did not teach like the scribes because the scribes were quote different scholars of old but Jesus does not need the words of scholars of old because he is the living word and the Bible says that when they heard the words of Jesus, it penetrated their heart and revealed their need for God. This leopard, ladies and gentlemen, as Jesus has finished teaching and has come down the mountain with his following, the leopard calls out to Jesus in a courageous display of faith. He bowed down to Jesus and says, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that leprosy was considered one of the most serious disease that you can have in the time of our text. During this time, leprosy was a skin disease that discolored you. It made you look like a different color. That It was so serious that the Leviticus law commanded that anyone who had leprosy had to live in outside colonies. They, because the people were so afraid that if you came in contact with a leper, that what they had on them would rub off onto you and the whole town would become infected. Sound like COVID to me, ladies and gentlemen. But Jesus, as this leper, does something that displays risky faith. He has no business being this close to Jesus. And he petitions Jesus and says, Lord, if you will. Now, this was a very intelligent leper, ladies and gentlemen. Because this leper knew who to call on. Oh, can I just park there for a minute and hang my homiletical hat right here and say, has anybody ever had to call on Jesus? Is there anybody who knows that there's still power in the name of Jesus? Deliverance in the name of Jesus. Doors open in his name. I wish I had about five of y'all and I'll make number six who will just call his name Jesus. Grandmama would say, the more I call him, the better I feel. Uh, this leopard literally says, Jesus, I know that you can. Only if it be your will. Has anybody ever been there in life? When you pursue all of your options, you can still go to Jesus because he is the one who will open the door. When you've used all of your resources, you can go to Jesus because he is your source. When you've climbed every mountain, tunnel through every valley, Jesus will be right there. And precisely, ladies and gentlemen, maybe you're like me. 
and you're here this morning and you feel that you need a change from the Lord. You are saying that, Lord, I need something different. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, this leopard paints the picture of our helplessness before God. Have you ever been helpless? Have you ever been alone? Have you ever been strapped of your resources? This leopard, ladies and gentlemen, represents who we are outside of Jesus Christ. Jesus does not leave us left on the margins hoping to fend for ourselves. But the good news is, is when you recognize your helplessness before God, he will give you exactly what you need. I'm preaching better than y'all witness. Not only do I see a desperate cry, but then lastly, I see that Jesus can handle your condition. Ladies and gentlemen, not only is there a desperate cry, but now there is a divine cleansing. This leopard says, Jesus, if you will, I want you to heal me. Now look at what Jesus says to this man. His reply is, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him. Reply, I will be clean. Jesus touched them, y'all. I said, Jesus touched them. Now, the crazy thing about this passage, ladies and gentlemen, is it was believed that leprosy was the one that was contagious. But this text reveals it is not the leper that's contagious, but it's Jesus. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus shows us that it is more power in me than what you have on you. I'm talking to somebody in here right now who's going through a situation that you seem to think that there is no help, no aid and assistance for you. You're stressed by the second, misery by the minute, heartbreak by the hour, disappointment by the day, mayhem by the month. I want to tell you that Jesus has something for your situation. Maybe you're tired of dealing with hard-headed children. Maybe you're tired of dealing with crazy co-workers. Maybe you're tired of dealing with, uh, with, uh, with lying politicians. I want to suggest to you this morning that Jesus is willing and he has something to handle your condition. Boy, that sounds like good news to me. Jesus touches him. I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, that after Jesus has just taught them on, uh, on the Sermon on the Mount, he lets them know that there's power in his words. But then succeeding that this leper and he heals him with a miracle, Jesus also shows us that there is power in his deeds. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, that simply suggests to you and I today that whatever you need, God has it. Boy, y'all don't know when to shout. Whatever you need, my God has it. Text says, and I'm moving on. Jesus heals this man. And he tells them, see that you tell no one. But go show yourself to the priest. You may be asking, ladies and gentlemen, why does he have to show himself to the priest when the miracle has already happened? Well, for you Bible scholars here, you do know Leviticus chapter 13 and chapter 14 discusses the Leviticus law. And the law says that if anyone is cleansed from leprosy, they have to go show themselves to the priest and be made ceremonial clean. Can I put it to where you understand that? When you test positive for COVID at work, most employers will require minimum one negative test, but some of them require two negative, two consistent negative test results before they allow you to come back to work so they know that you are clean, you're cured. 
And so notice, ladies and gentlemen, he does not tell him to go to his local doctor. He tells him to go to the priest. You missed it. You're going to catch it in a minute. He does not tell him to go to his local politician. He tells him to go to the priest. He does not tell him to go to the nearest drug store. He tells him to go to the priest. He does not tell him to go see mama and get that good home remedy. He tells him to go show himself to the priest. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, that problem that you can't fix on your own, maybe you ought to take it to the church where you can see your priest, your preacher, your prophet, that you can be made clean because evidently there's a blessing when you go to the man of God. I'm on. I see the do not disturb signs on some of y'all faces, so I'm going to holler at y'all later. But Jesus tells him, go show yourself to the priest so you can be made clean. Notice Jesus says, don't say nothing. Just show up. Because when you show up, they'll be able to see that my grace is sufficiently flowing through your life. I'm here to tell somebody at Evergreen, you don't have to say nothing. Just show up. And that's evidence that God is real. How is it that sufficient, Reverend? I'm glad, Jax, because millions didn't make it. But uh, I'm one of the ones that beats. Yeah. You do know COVID has taken many out. But the Lord has kept me. And that's just evidence that God's grace is flowing through my life. You want to know how it's evidence in your life. Because in the midst of an economic collapse, you still have a roof over your head. You still have a car to drive. You still have a church to come to. And that's just God's grace flowing in your mind. I'm going to tell you that in this life, you will have tribulations, but be a good cheer. The Lord has overcome them all. I'm going to tell you that weeping may endure for night, but joy will come in the morning. Good evening, never green. May the Lord bless you real good. But I'm here to tell you if when you give the best of service, telling the world that a Savior has come, be not dismayed when men leave you. But if Yeah. 
They agreed, went swimming. All of a sudden, the lake had a great tire and pulled those boys too far in the water. Dad had a split second to make a decision to save his own son or save the friend. Grabbed the friend and pulled him to safety. Took him home. The parents, with tears in their eyes, asked the question. Said, how in the world did you save our son? and not your own. He told them with tears in his eyes, he said, I knew when my son stood with the Lord, but I wanted to give your son a chance. And I'm here to tell you today, Evergreen, if you're here right now, whether in person or virtually, right now the Lord is giving you a chance to come now while the blood is still running warm in your head. Amen. We see that there's none, but there's still room at the cross. If Israel does not repent, Jacob shall not lose his reward in heaven. Amen. Amen. Amen.
you know, maybe again, maybe someone out in, in Facebook land. If, if you're in need of prayer, there is a there's a link. You can uh, ask for prayer, and, and, and someone will be reaching out to you. Uh, and that's anytime, not just on Sunday morning. That link is there. Use it. Use it. We have all this technology that's available to us now, and, and take advantage of it and use it. Uh, again, thank you, Brother Jordan. Uh, as always, we'll be exiting out the door on my right, and uh, there will be a tithe and offering box that will be set there for you. Uh, your offerings and your gifts. Uh, at this particular time, we've got a few minutes left. Uh, are there any any announcements that need to be made I mean, right now uh, that we need to be aware of? I can't think of any. Before we leave, we want to say a you know, special thank you, special acknowledgement to all the grandparents with this being Grandparents Day. Uh, matter of fact, we didn't do it earlier, but let's give all the grandparents a hand. If all hearts and minds are, are satisfied, we want to give us a closing song. And, uh, after that, we'll ask uh, Reverend Joyner to give our closing benediction.